Hey everybody, welcome back to the Quinn Gym channel. Hopefully uh, any commercials you might have seen before the video weren't too annoying, because as you know, as we get the video rolling, we don't show any more ads or commercials. Totally ad free. Anyways, we got the 177 behind us. Just got an annual. Still liking that plane a lot. It's, uh, it's running good, very versatile. I'm a big fan of the 177 now. The RV is still going too. I want to make some more videos with that. But today, as you probably saw in the description, I wanted to talk about headset choices. Um, I've got a lot of experience with a lot of different headsets going back 30, 35 years. And I've come to some conclusions. Just want to kind of share that with you. Um, we have the Bose A20. I know the A30 just came out. I don't have those. I imagine they're going to be kind of similar. Bose A20, the Lightspeed Zulu, and the David Clark... 1x the three headsets that i have a lot of experience using especially recently so i just want to go through it give you a general idea if you're looking for headsets and want to know what their strengths and weaknesses are uh, this might help you out so we'll get to it okay so here's the three headsets you got the lightspeed zulu which comes in about 899 dollars the bose a20 they're about 1200 dollars. think 1195 and the dc 1x they are $895. So the Bose is definitely the most expensive. So just generally speaking, um, for aviation, obviously the Bose has a big name. Everyone goes with the Bose. We'll just kind of talk about some of the features that I like about each of the headsets first. So the Lightspeed Zulu headset, they're made out of you know stainless steel, magnesium, very light, extremely comfortable. If you notice how they kind of just sit in here, they just want to open up. They don't want to crush your head, right? Lightspeed Zulu has very large cup capacity. See how your ear will fit inside that very easily? That alone is going to give you noise canceling and protection from sound. It's very comfortable to wear one, unlike you get, you know, sometimes on the Bose headsets. They're a little uh, not as forgiving on the ear. They're Kevlar cables. That's a big thing, too. A lot of times in GA, the cables will get slammed indoors or abused. The Lightspeed Zulu really seem to have durable cables. That's why I wanted to give them a try. I've been super happy with the Lightspeed Zulu. Um, extremely comfortable. Just comfortable, light, wear it all day long. As far as weight, they're all 13, 14 ounces. The weight's kind of the same, but just look at the way they sit here. See how that's nice and open? The David Clark's out. Look at what this one's doing, the Bose. It's just clamping your head, isn't it? And it's got a lot of pressure trying to clamp your head. So that's where that kind of falls behind. But the Lightspeed Zulu, you know, tough, durable, super quiet. Um, come over here to, let's do the David Clarks next, a DC-1X. Again, these are the ones I wear at work. These work really good in the jets, flying airliners. The nice thing about them, going plane to plane, see how they kind of fold up real nice in a compact space? The Lightspeeds don't really do that as well. The Bose, not quite as well either. So either it's good to be compact. Again, the ear cavity is huge very comfortable even if the batteries die this is going to be comfortable for you um you know durability david clark i remember flight instructing back 30 years ago 30 plus years now and people had these david clark headsets the h1030s and they'd wear them use them for flight instructing professionally eight ten hours a day for like seven eight years and they just held up david clark is just known for quality uh, the noise cancellation is very good. I think maybe a little better for the jet noises than in for GA. But overall, a very, very strong headset. The Bose <clears throat> A20, I would say these are the least comfortable headsets. They kind of clamp down on your head. The, the head pan cushion, you know, the head cushion isn't as good. The noise canceling, I would say, is where Bose wins. They, they're a little bit quieter. Um, I did back and forth in a plane with the Bose A20s and the Lightspeed Zulus. And I took this one on, wore it for a while. A few seconds later, put this one on. And I went back and forth, and I came to the conclusion that the Bose actually was a little bit quieter. They had a little better noise canceling, but the Lightspeeds is excellent. And you could wear these all day and be comfortable. So the Bose is really good at noise canceling. But it's just, it's not great for comfort. And something else I'll say about Bose, I fly with a lot of people that use the Bose headsets. And whenever I see somebody pull out an A20, I kind of go, here we go. Um, they break a lot. 
they, they, the guys brag that their customer service is just great because every time they break, they send them back and they come back fixed for a little while. Right. I don't know what the customer service is like on David Clark's because these never break. I've been using these for seven years and they've worked perfectly and they've just never given me any issue. The Bose guys, a lot of the times the problem is the cable. You get a lot of static and interference and they cut out and they have to send them back. And then Bose sends you a new one and you do that over and over again. So if you want to pay a lot more money for an uncomfortable headset that breaks all the time, but has a little better noise quality, then I'd go with the Bose. If you want something that's almost as quiet as the Bose A20, but way more comfortable and more durable, Lightspeed Zulu. Super, super comfy. And the David Clarks, um, I just can't say enough good things about the David Clarks. They win in just about every category. Um, durability, noise canceling. I do feel like the, the light speeds for GA may be a little better on the noise canceling than the David Clarks. I have no scientific data to try and, you know, prove that to you. But that's just been my experience. They, they work really good. I try them in GA and they work okay in GA, but they don't seem quite as quiet as the light speeds. Um, so in conclusion, um, for general aviation, I go with the light speed Zulu. They're big, they're comfortable, they're quiet, they're durable. Kevlar cord for uh, jets, airliners, when you have to move between plane to plane a lot. I'll tell you what, when you're packing and uh, space matters, right? And that's a tight little package you could put in its carrier. I've been doing this for, man, over seven years with these. Um, and they're great and they've always worked. I use these, I fly airliners probably, oh, 85, 90 hours a month for seven years and they've just been perfect. And then these guys. Um, I don't know. I don't know why you'd pay more for a headset that, that's less in every category other than maybe noise canceling. I mean, look at that head clamp. What's that doing? That, that force is just trying to give you a headache. So that's it. A down and dirty quick overview of my headset choices. Um, yeah, these I stay away from. The other two, great. Maybe I'd say GA. And jets or airliners, or if you have to move. And I should give these a better shot in GA. I usually keep these in my work bag, so I, I don't use them all the time. I've tried them in small planes. They do work, like I said. So that's my breakdown. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you have any other ones. I know there's some other brands out there you can use. But uh, these are three of the big heavy hitters. And um, I don't know. Let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell me that you know, I'm crazy because Bose makes the best headsets on the planet, and I'm just goofy for not recognizing that fact. But I tell you what, I, I really don't believe in the quality of them. So anyways, that's what's going on. It's been a long winter, spring's finally coming. Hopefully we'll get some more flying videos going. Show you the 177 again. Nobody get triggered by my American flag. And over here, this is the, the car area, the hangar. Ooh, do a video on this guy maybe. 450 horsepower, American muscle and some classic muscle. This is off to the side. Might have seen that bike before. Like I said, we're still in winter mode, but uh, hopefully spring's coming. So I've got some other videos I wanna make. Um, <laughs> I have plans for. I'd like to do one on chemtrails. Chemtrails. Um, and some other, some other videos with the RV and whatnot. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. I know I repeated myself a little bit. But uh, that's what you get for winging it in one take. So, anyways, we'll be back. Got some more ideas in the next couple weeks. Thanks for watching.